Finding a new job can be incredibly stressful. In fact, looking for a job might be more stressful than having full-time employment. In today's video, I want to give you some tips that you can use today to avoid burnout during your job search. Let's go. Now, the first thing I would recommend doing is set realistic goals. It is really easy to go out there and say, okay, I'm going to apply to 100 jobs. I'm going to get 10 interviews. I'm going to go there and nail it and get an offer. But that's not realistic, especially in a competitive market. So the first thing that I want you to do is give yourself a little bit of grace, set realistic goals, and don't get upset at yourself if things don't move and progress quickly. This can be difficult. It's difficult to monitor your emotions and actually impact them like that. But being able to set reasonable, obtainable goals will keep you from being frustrated and delay the sensation of burnout. The next tip is create a schedule. Uh, I find that the most uh, successful candidates, one of the things they do is they actually build out a schedule. Um, you know, if they don't currently have a job and their full-time job is interviewing, what they do is they schedule different things, right? They schedule a time where they're working on a resume, schedule time for networking, schedule time for applying, schedule time for interview prep, schedule time away for lunch, for a workout. If you treat your job search like a full-time job and build out a schedule that is palatable and sustainable, you will be much more successful in the long run. The next one might seem a bit hippy-dippy-ish, but I'm gonna include it here because I think it's important. Practice self-compassion. We are our own harshest critics. So a lot of times when we're interviewing and we make a mistake, we get really upset at ourselves. We go, oh, you really dropped the ball there and you, you, you really messed up. You had a great chance and you messed it up. And we are way more critical on ourselves than we would be on other people. If somebody came to you and they were having the same difficulty, there is no shot you would be as critical and as harsh to them as you would be to yourself. So it's just one of those things that I like to throw out there as a reminder. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have great interviews. You're going to have bad interviews. You're going to have interviews that went great in which you didn't get the job and you're going to be perplexed, puzzled, disappointed. Just remember to take it easy on yourself. Network, 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 network. One of the things that I, I think is pretty common in burning out in the interview process is people do so many things around interviewing, right? They're like, Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix up my resume. Okay, I'm gonna pay for a resume service. Okay, I'm gonna apply to 100 jobs. Okay, I'm gonna you know, modify my LinkedIn um, profile. But what they avoid doing is networking. They don't understand that the people component can be one of the most uh, effective means of getting a new job. Reaching out to past colleagues and let them know you're looking. Reaching out to people on social networks, commenting on LinkedIn, engaging with people, and then asking about their organization and seeing if they have any open positions. This goes back to one of those first recommendations that I gave on creating a schedule. Absolutely include networking in, um, you know, in your practice. Set aside time. Some of that could be uh, connecting with prior managers, prior coworkers, people you know, who you have personal relationships with, who, who work for different companies, who might be able to gain access. The easiest path to, to getting a job is being in a company already and it being like kind of a step forward, a promotion. But the second easiest path is being a referral. So make sure that you're networking, it's huge. Hey, if you're finding any value in this video, could you do me a massive favor and just like tap that like button? When you do that, it tells YouTube that I don't suck. It helps the channel a ton and it motivates me to make more videos like this. And if you're willing to do that, well, you might as well just subscribe. Um, that way you won't miss any of my three free weekly videos that are all designed to help you land your dream job and maximize your career. The next thing I would say is focus on what you can control. There's going to be so many things in the job search and the job hunt that are outside of your control. And you can really fatigue yourself spending time worrying about those things. But at the end of the day, you can just control what you can control. You can control the time you spend networking. You can control the effort you put into your resume, cover letter, LinkedIn. You can control the amount of jobs you apply for, and you can control the preparation you put in prior to an interview. If you go to an interview, you do great, but they hire an internal candidate, there's nothing you can do about that. And you shouldn't spend any time stressing on that. So, you know, as you, you deal with the uh, results, the outcomes, the different stimuli, try to focus on the things that you can actively control. If you have some disappointing news, you know, you can't control that that happened but you can control how you move forward and how you prepare. A huge key to burning out is celebrating small wins. Um, when you get invited to that on-site interview, yeah, you, you haven't gotten a job offer yet, but that's still success. Even applying to a job and getting an interview in general can sometimes feel like success in a tough market, but having an interview and then progressing to the second one, you should feel good about that. I mean, don't celebrate like the game's over. It's not, you still need to compete. You still need to have a good showing, but you should feel good about that. You should celebrate that success. And along the way, make sure you don't lose sight of those little wins and celebrate them appropriately. Now this kind of goes along with the scheduling, but set boundaries. 
At the end of the day, if you spend a long time applying and you're doing everything you can, and you've put in a good day's work and you just start going and you keep on going into the evening, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, that is not sustainable. And I know it feels like there's always more work to be done and there is, but there is more time. And if you make a habit of extending your work late into the evening, going beyond your limits, going beyond your boundaries, you are going to burn out. It is the fastest way to do that. So make sure you set boundaries and do your best to adhere to them. Now, a huge tip is to be organized. Whatever method works best for you, finding a way to be organized can be critical to success in your job search. Maybe that's OneNote, maybe it's Excel, but find a way to actually chronicle what you've done, where you've applied, what you're doing. If you can stay organized, then you can be more efficient. And being more efficient increases the likelihood of you being successful and decreases the likelihood of you burning out because you're doing things that are repetitive over and over again, wasting time. That would be incredibly frustrating. The last thing I want you to do is I want you to prepare. When you have an interview, it is important to not leave anything on the field. Go into that interview as prepared as you can. I've done a ton of work on creating different strategies for being prepared, but one of the things I want you to check out is this video here. This video here is how to get a job in six minutes, and I'm basically gonna talk you through the most important six minutes in every interview. Look, we all know it is really challenging to get an interview, so when you get it, you need to maximize it. I'm going to give you some critical tips here, so I am done here, but I will see you over there.